while most people spend an extraordinary amount of time looking for shortcuts, falling into the ultimate trap, wasting years to try to save months, truth of the matter is that cultivating survivorship is the real key to everything. You've probably heard about it before, but there's a concept called survivorship bias. As I've learned it, it comes from World War II, airplanes that got shot up and made it back to base were then analyzed. And they decided to put more armor where all those bullets were. Or the bullet holes, technically. The problem being that these were the survivors. They're literally measuring what didn't blow up the plane, and they're fixing, they're solving for what didn't blow up the plane. They have no idea where the bullet entered that blew up all the planes that blew up. Make sense? Like they're going about it bass backwards. Now, so many gurus are selling you their secret, their survivorship bias. They're selling you armor plating for the things that they perceive may have helped them or they perceived as just a unmet need in the market. But they're promoting that as if it's the be all end all. This is what's going to save you so you don't get shot down. You know, oh, thank God been really scary out here trying to build this business all by myself on my laptop so you buy their thing and it doesn't really actually do anything other than one it deducts money from your account oh but miles it's a tax deduction well yeah but you have to be making money first for that to matter and b that's money out of your pocket two thousand dollars so you get a quote-unquote tax deduction on two thousand dollars that's two thousand dollars out of your bank account It's a month's mortgage on some dude's info product that was fancy. Whereas the alternative, the thing that worked for my wife and I, the thing that's worked for all of the successful niche site owners I know, six figure, multiple six figure, seven figure beyond. It's the fact that they're just still doing it. Literally, they've survived. They've just showed up long enough that that process of continuing to show up for that audience for a decade, for five years, for three years, that process is the thing that's made them the leaders in their space. And out of showing up all the freaking time putting out video after video after video starting with terrible videos awkward on the couch i'm talking about me right now ladies and gentlemen i am talking about the one and only miles beckler my first awkward ass video on a couch in hollywood (laughs) why i was inspired to start my 90 day challenge to kick this all off when i was in hollywood good lord that couch who knows what happened on that anyways the moment I was like, I have to freaking do this. So I put up number one and then came number two and then came number three. And I knew because of the extreme levels of success we've had with my wife's website that literally came out of the fact that we just kept working on it. We didn't get distracted. So some people will look at that and be like, oh, well, Miles, there's something special in this niche that you chose it must be the niche i have the wrong niche well if there is something special in that niche it's that my wife is truly deeply in love and obsessed with the metaphysics the realms beyond the physical energy bodies astral bodies cosmic stuff, astrology, numerology, ascension, all this, this whole world. It's a gigantic niche. It has echoes 
of the new thought movement that took place between the late 1800s and the early to mid 1900s. So a hundred years ago or so, same with copywriting, we're on cycles, repeating things over and over and over from a very big perspective. But she's so in love with all these topics that when she created this last offer that's out or the last blog post or the last video, whatever it is, all of the things, because she's still creating for that same audience, growing that same brand. Now, where the attention has gone over the years has changed. We're not doing as much blogging as we were. We're doing a lot more ads to opt-ins and we're trying to fiddle with TikTok ads right now, to be perfectly honest. So as the world evolves, we are continuing to evolve our brand and the content and how we publish and where we publish in order to keep showing up, to survive. And then on YouTube, I just knew it when I started. I knew it. when video one came out, I had so many failed attempts before my wife and I caught on to the niche that we're still working to this day. In one video, I counted 13 of them. I specifically left out several because they were that awkward. But poker chip websites, clothing before print on demand was a thing, printed t-shirts and stuff. I tried to sell backpacks out of college, real estate investing, lead generation websites, the rank and rent. I've tried several times to mash up network marketing with internet marketing. Oh, I've tried so many different things. And the reason none of those are quote unquote successful today is because I stopped at some point. I got shot down in the survivorship bias example. That plane didn't make it back to base. At some point along the way, I was like, I just can't really be all in on being a on stage network marketing, attraction marketing guy. Can't do it. Don't believe that's what I'm on this planet. It just ain't for me. That was the moment I knew I got to do something different. I got to choose another niche or I got to, figure something else out. The poker chip website. So my uncle, maybe I'll tell that story in depth. My uncle was a pro poker player and not glamorous at all. He's been a pro poker player since the 1960s and he's been a pro poker player for 40 years. So I got to see an old man at the end of a 40 year stint of playing pro poker. And I was pretty damn good at poker. I played poker since I was three. Um, but the laws changed around 2005 or something that we couldn't play online poker anymore. Couldn't make money. And the poker craze started to wane. And I just, I don't know, decided other things were more exciting. Had I stuck with that one website, I could easily have one of the top three poker chip websites on earth right now. I'd be minting money selling poker chips right now had I stuck with it because I'd have a website that would have 17 years of consistent publishing. I knew what to do then. I just stopped doing it. So the main point here is that you have to cultivate. It's like inviting cultivation. <laughs> you have to cultivate survivorship bias. Okay, so in your niche, there's a bunch of people who've been doing a bunch of stuff for a long time. I don't know how long you've been operating. I don't know how long they've been operating. But I know you weren't the first one to have this idea. Awesome. Every niche. They're all saturated. There's hundreds of thousands of blogs and websites about everything at this point in time. Millions of them. Billions of pages. That's fine. So some folks have a head start on you. Great. Are you in it to win it? If so, repeatedly publishing useful content that is optimized for the platform you're publishing on, repeatedly publishing optimized content for the platform you're publishing on for a few years will shoot you to the top, period. Every niche. That's it. And then after a few years, you ain't done. That just means you've officially started. Look around. How many business owners do you know in your life, from church, 
from work, from the businesses you buy from, like your family, your family's friends, out the network, all the way through social. How many businesses and business owners do you know of that don't do shit all day, that are passive income, F you money, hanging in a hammock, swinging from trees, and they ain't working? I bet it's pretty darn close to zero. Why? Because if you do have connections to successful people, they are the human embodiment of this survivorship thing, and they're showing up to work because they want their business to survive. And if they aren't there strategizing, leading the team, and a leader does the work, not sitting at a desk yelling at other people, the leader is in the trenches with the shovel in their hand. That's what a leader does, be the leader. They're making sure their business survives all day, every day. Now, this might seem a little disheartening. Like, oh, Miles. Now this could be a lot of work. Uh, I'm feeling kind of lazy. I'd rather eat Cheetos, drink Mountain Dew, and play video games. Okay. Fucking stream it. <laughs> Do that all day and just stream it all day and let that be your thing then. That's what I'm saying. So this is the magic. And here's the point is that the big thing that happened is I tried enough random shit Poker chips, real estate investing, t-shirts, network marketing, internet network, all that stuff. So in all those quote unquote failed attempts, my shot down airplanes, I learned so much. I learned how to publish. I learned how to launch a WordPress website. I learned how to create a pop-up. I learned how to grow an email list and manage an email list. I learned how to write an auto response. All that stuff got done over and over, I learned a little bit of HTML along the way. I learned a little bit of code, which you don't actually need, but it's kind of useful. It's all these little things. It was a lot more useful seven years ago than it is today, by the way. But a lot of these little things that I learned in all those planes getting shot down and then just keep showing up. I never stopped. Oh, that one didn't work. Cool. I should probably take six months of not working on a business at home because I'm so sad that my poker chip site is something I don't want to work on anymore. What the fuck? No. It was like literally the next day. All right, I need a better fucking idea because Papa got to eat. I was trying to have a family supported from a laptop because I cannot do the whole commute, cubicle, boss man. I can't do it. So I had to create something else which through all my studies, through all my learning, through all my personal developments, one thing that came out of network marketing that just clicked was you're on a personal development path. This ain't building a business. It's building a better human being who gives value to other people at scale. That mindset, yeah, that's the magic of all of it. And that's where this really stems from. And then in Albuquerque, New Mexico, sitting in a flipped house that we were just about to lose fucking $60,000 on because of global financial crisis. So in an economic environment, very similar to where we're at today, my wife and I are sitting there and we are like, what are we going to do for money? I'm kind of sort of trying to flip houses, but that is clearly dying. I'm flipping cars and I hated working at that place with the whole car sales folks. I was selling cars on eBay, shipping them all over the world. Melanie was doing real estate catering. She was demoing drinks and whole food, pouring little cups of drinks, trying to sell, promote drinks. So that's where we were. We were just doing a little bit of everything, whatever, just to pay the bills in a very low cost location, right next to the ghetto in Albuquerque, New Mexico, living for about 400 bucks a month was our utilities and rent at that point. In college, I was only paying 285 a month for all utilities, all electricity. Why? Because I had to become successful on my own. And growing up in the Bay Area, if my overhead was three grand a month for an apartment or 2,200 a month, fuck, I could never make it. So I did the horrible, difficult, extremely challenging thing to move to somewhere I've never been before. And I hit the fucking reset button. And I started over in a way cheaper location. And then I didn't have to get over a $3,000 a month hurdle. I had to get over a $300 a month hurdle. I was able to figure that one out. All these things I'm talking about all add up to this one giant idea of survivorship basis. I didn't have to go back and get a real job in the Bay because life is so expensive in the Bay where I grew up, which is what most of the people I grew up with are still dealing with. I didn't have to spend more time on the day job 
and less time on my fortune, which is the Miles Beckler business, because I just moved. I just left. I don't know. Maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can't. I don't care. It doesn't matter. This is just what I did because I was cultivating survivorship. It was how I would survive. Well, fuck, here's one way to survive. Drop my monthly expense down into the hundreds from the several thousands. Perfect. Life just got a little easier. This is going to help me survive long enough while I work on and build the skills and the assets that would ultimately create a business that was, I mean, just uncancelable. It's recession proof. It's inflation proof. Like it sucks that things are getting more expensive for a lot of people. I don't care. I send my parents hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of the top, top, top tier meat. Some 10 grand for an adventure fund. Don't worry about the prices, parents. Go. Just go play. You guys are good. Everything's still okay. I got you, fam. Because I've survived. So those skills, those times, those efforts mixed with my wife's absolute love of this thing. Dun, 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 dun. We finally had that magical kind of like combination of things that she's still reading those magazines. She's still hanging out with these folks, having these conversations. It's still what she loves. So she just keeps doing what she loves. She publishes on a regular basis while exploring and playing with and thinking about and talking about and researching and engaging with these ideas that she loves. And she just keeps publishing and everything works. The traffic flows, the opt-in pop-ups pop up, the list grows, the email automations sell stuff. We create new stuff, sell it to the list through broadcast emails. Dun, 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 dun. Start to figure out TikTok and like, where's the next channel of traffic? We got traffic coming on this most recent offer, we're paying for traffic from Google ads, the text ads, Google image ads, the GDN network. We got TikTok ads running. We got Instagram ads running. We got Facebook ads running. We're firing on all cylinders. I got joint ventures. I got affiliates mailing it for us. I got six separate traffic sources, not to mention all the organic traffic that we got, the TikTok, the Instagram, did, did all that stuff. This offer is going to absolutely crush. Why? Because we've actually launched this offer four times, four years in a row. The offer has survived. And I've learned every year we launch this, I learn a lot. We're doing more this year. We got more assets. We got more creatives. We have five separate landing pages that all kind of promote the same thing. So I got five separate angles that we can promote this thing. And now I got traffic coming from six, seven different places. Woo! I'll just tell you right now, it's going to be a good month. It is a good month. We're four days in, having a hell of a month already. Why? Well, because last year I didn't do as good as that. The year before that, I didn't do as good as that, but I've learned and I've just kept with it. I'm just doing it again. Just doing it again. Just keep showing up. That's how you survive. So if you're in the grind and you're just surviving right now, you're like, fuck, man, I feel like I'm barely keeping my head above water. Well, that's about, uh, yeah, that's feeling pretty much. Perpetually like stressed, looking over your shoulder, wondering if it's all going to work. I mean, my wife and I had moments with her brand where we were like, oh man, it just doesn't feel like it's working. We're putting all this effort in and we're only making 1200 bucks a month. Should we keep with it? And there was this one conversation when we lived in this tiny cabin on the North shore of Lake Tahoe. Remarkable place, but I mean, this thing was tiny and it's one of those old drafty cabins and we're living in a place that can get three meters of snow in a week. We could get literally 10 feet of snow in a week. And it's cold and it's tiny and we just feel like everyone else is successful and we are broke living in this cabin ski bum kind of life. And we're like, what are we doing? I think we were maybe three years in on the business at that point in time. Getting impatient. Considering not surviving. And we had a talk. And my wife and I were like, you know what? Getting these messages out and helping people like meditate and go within and like calm their ego mind down a little bit. This is so important and it's helped us so much that whether this works or not as a business, it's a part of what we're here to do on the planet. So whatever, we're just going to keep going. Let's just keep going. Not kidding you. Within six months of that, everything just started to change. And we actually started committing more to the audience. Well, let's just give more, create more. And that's when we put out our first Kindle book, our first opt-in. Then we learned about doing the one-time offers and bingo. I didn't know from a CEO and a CMO, I didn't know 
exactly where the cash flow from a hyper successful modern digital publishing company comes from. We were hunting around is the old spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. That was on 1.0. We we're just trying a bunch of shit. What works? Oh, okay. It took me five years ish to just crush the 30K mark and be just on a freight train gaining momentum towards $100,000 a month. It took about five years to just be locked in that zone. Be like, okay, this train's going. All right, we got it now. I get it. Five years of not knowing what to do for that. That understanding of what in the business actually drives the revenue, what moves the needle in your business. It actually drives traffic. It actually drives leads. It actually drives conversions. It actually builds you a business. That's what I talk about on my YouTube channel. Because then once I realized and had been geeking out on this stuff since 2003, actually before 03. 03 is just when I made my first dollar. I started playing with websites in 1999. It was tough to build a website back then. So all that knowledge from 99 to 03, from 03 to 09 when my wife and I started. So that whole period was just a decade of trial and error that got me pretty much nowhere. And then from working with my wife for another five years, we're now like almost 15 years down this path. And then we worked on one project for five years and everything clicked because I made it to the 30, 50 K a month levels. And as Steve Jobs said, you can only connect the dots when you're looking back. And so now that I was able to land a plane in wartime back to the home base, I can look at it and be like, yo, I got some fucking bullet holes on this thing, but God damn, she made it back. Got it that time. Bingo. And then it was about two years within that. So from there, we were nomads and I was flying all over the world, attending and speaking at marketing events. And the stuff people are saying on stage, these gurus that run these really big companies that a lot of people are addicted from buying lifetime deals from. The stuff they were saying on stage, was, these people don't know what they're talking about. And I'm not speaking about anybody in specific, but I literally had just seen 30 or 40 keynote speeches over a couple of years. And the things everybody are talking about are different than what I experienced in the trenches. I'm like, I don't know if these guys are in the trenches anymore. I think they're just pitching fancy talks to these big events and they're just on stage and this is weird. Okay. And then bought a couple of expensive guru courses because I can finally afford them. And I'm going through those. And I'm like, God, this isn't really what's working. That's a little part of it. But if you only did that, there's no fucking way you're building a real business. So they're charging two grand to teach you a little part of it. And the people on stage are selling these 10,000 or fuck dude, I've seen pitches for $30,000 masterminds on stage from some of the events I've been to. And the people are like, you're not that smart. People pay you that much? Like, you're just a fucking dude who kind of sort of sounds slick. That's when I knew I had to start publishing as the Miles Beckler brand. That's when I knew. I was like, okay, these people are all either extremely unethical and they're selling things they know won't work for exorbitant amounts of money to brag about how much money they're making, which is a huge thing even in the spirituality niche, by the way, huge thing, masterminding for these people. I've been in the closed rooms. I've heard what they say about their customers and it offended me. I was shocked. The point I'm trying to make again, that relates to survivors by survivorship bias is that I got chills right now. When I knew like, fuck, I have to teach all of this stuff. It's about 2016. And then I went to a personal development conference. I got smacked over the head with a challenge at the end of it to do something for 90 days. It scared once a day, every day for 90 days. It scared the shit out of me. Write it on a card. So I wrote it down on a card. YouTube video day every day. Finally building the Miles Becker brand. I had kind of started and stopped it. 09 is the first thing I can find that I published under the Miles Beckler brand. Okay. 09. It was the first piece of content I published. So from 09 to 2016, I fiddled with it kind of haphazardly. 2016 was the moment I was like, fuck, I landed the plane. I know what it takes. Everybody's trying to sell the wrong thing. <sighs> I have to teach this. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to have to enter this arena, go like hell fight like my life depends on it, 
for years on end, 100% focused on delivering more value and more useful content than anyone has ever published in this space before. And I don't give a goddamn hell if I pay, if I make a dime from this, I'm confident it's going to work, but I have to do it anyways, because all the other information that all these people are getting is wrong or it's not wrong. It's rarely wrong. It's incomplete. There are nine or 10 2000 hour courses you could go buy to get all the incomplete ideas. And then with nine or 10 of these courses from all the different gurus, and they do this on purpose, then you'd know how the whole game works after spending a couple grand from all of them. But the truth is your plane would get shot down after you bought the third or the fourth guru course at $2,000 and you might not ever show up again. And you might go back to that job and you might leave that thing inside of your heart that our world needs you to get out to the world, you might let that fucking die. And I can't let you do that. So I'm here today, August 4th, 7.36 in the morning. Got a mug of coffee, got a water, and I had this much of an idea. I wrote two words on a post-it note yesterday. Cultivate survivorship. Here's my process. I opened Wikipedia. I have screencast-o-matic of all things, like the $20 software is what I'm recording this on. And I started with the basic, you know, like just a reminder of what it is to keep this one idea in front of me, survivorship bias, to try to keep this freaking train on the tracks. Thanks for sticking with me. And here we are. The truth. You just got to keep showing up and delivering value for your people and go all in on your audience. And when you go all in on that one audience and you stick with it long enough, the whole world starts to notice that you're the most trusted person in that space. People talk about you, people share you, people at mention you on all kinds of platforms. People put you in their stories. People make TikToks for you. I ain't made a TikTok yet. Miles Beckler's on TikTok. Miles Beckler getting engagement on TikTok. Why? Because my content on YouTube is so damn good that there's TikTokers out there just making little video cuts of my shit, putting it out there, using me as a hashtag. Go, kid. Get you some. I got folks working for me I ain't never met before because my shit's so good. Why? Well, 678 videos or something. Six years of publishing on top of 15 years of figuring it all out. I've survived. I'm one of the survivors. And you need to become one of the survivors as well. The cool part is you only need to survive longer than, in some senses, those in your little sub niche. I don't recommend going into the marketing niche or the make money online niche. Don't recommend it. Because you're going up against people like me or the Brunson boy, or John Benson got a YouTube video now. Boy, you want to be a new copywriter trying to teach copywriting on YouTube when John Benson's around? Dude's made billions for his clients. One of the best there is teaching. There's possibly some better copywriters alive, but they aren't teaching. They're done. They're kicking back. They're enjoying life. Survivorship bias. You have to cultivate it. It's not happen chance. It's the arduous getting up and doing the work again today. Getting up and doing the work again today. Getting up and doing the work again today. Do that long enough with the focus of truly helping your audience. It always has to go back to that Zig Ziglar quote. You can have anything you want in this world if you help enough other people get what they want. And if you just keep showing up and helping other people get what they want little by little, right now today, I thought the one thing that you wanted was how do I make it? And I think that this survivorship bias is kind of a really important idea. And I don't care about getting the YouTube algorithm to whiz bang on this thing and hopefully it could trend on. No, I don't give a fuck about that. I need to make sure you get it. That's it. And this is the right medium for that information. I ain't trying to just get a bunch of attention or else I'd be on TikTok doing stupid shit, throwing around piles of money. Doesn't sound very fun. That ain't something I'll survive. I can't do that. But I can do this. So I'll just keep doing this. Figure out what you are willing to do, what you're able to do, who you're going to help, how you're going to help them. And then go.
Just show up every day and do it. And then listen to the things like this, hopefully. And well, you're still here, so obviously. But then listen to the things that keep you fired up on Audible. Scribd is amazing. There's a bunch of great audio on Scribd. It's like 10 bucks a month. Audible, you can get one credit per month for like 15 bucks a month. Zig Ziglar's See You at the Top 25th Anniversary Audio is wonderful. Jim Rohn's The Day Your Life Turned Around is a great piece. The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield is fantastic if you're publishing blog posts or videos and you're on that major publishing schedule. You can look on Scribd. A lot of those things might be on Scribd. And then you get into the full mindset stuff. The Napoleon Hill Think and Grow Rich. I like the old stuff. The Magic of Believing. These audios are designed to keep you getting that mindset in the right way of like, I'm a fucking survivor. I'm just going to make it to the end. My family don't get it. My friends don't get it. Nobody gets it, but I get it. And... I'm so passionate about sharing this for all these people. And if you don't have that thing that you're so passionate about sharing for everybody, no, that's fine. You might just be in the phase of building the skills. So when you have that aha moment of like, dude, I'm just going to dedicate my life to this, bring the skills with you. And that's what happened for me. I built all those skills by kind of working on these quote unquote failed projects. I learned how to create an airplane that could survive and make it back to base by creating a bunch of airplanes that didn't make it back to base. And every time I had an airplane, go kerplunker in the old ocean of, I don't know, whatever it is we play in. That's okay, cool. Oh, that's why that one failed. Cause I actually hate this. I actually hate network marketing. I actually hate enrolling a non-marketing human being into a marketing campaign and trying to get them to become a marketer when they are scared to death of marketing. Oh, duplication is a wonderful word in theory, but in practice, it's fucking torture for me. Personality types. I love that stuff. Great. Self-sorting. Took me a few years to figure that one out, but I learned about personal development. I learned about sales. I learned a lot in my time in network marketing. I learned about building lists. I learned that the biggest people in network marketing got big ass email lists and they'll take their whole group and they'll be in this company for a little while. And then they build up the biggest team and they're a top earner. And then they leave and they go over to this company for a while and top earner. And like, why? Cause they got a list. Aha. Maybe I need a list. I don't really want to play this game they're playing, but. I see the list as the magic behind it all. Aha. Learned that shit back in like 04, 05 is when that really sunk in. And my first business had no list and came down to zero in 2003. But alas, I didn't know when that business crashed what I did wrong in 03. I learned that later in this MLM thing I was doing, the internet marketing, network marketing thing I was trying. And I was like, man, all these people who were winning have a list. Oh, that's why I didn't make money after. Oh, God. God, they went to a different company with their list. They're still profitable. Wow. Let's go build me one of those. What do I want to build a list in? I don't know. Poker chips. I'm addicted to poker right now. Great. Start there. <laughs> I don't know. This is my truth. Other people probably got their own truth, but I thought this might be helpful for you. Thanks for spending 34 minutes and 33 seconds with me today. I appreciate you. I really like showing up on this. I don't know why. It's so weird how it ebbs and flows, and I had a little radio silence for a bit, but now I'm having all kinds of fun with you. I've been traveling a lot, and I'm going to let you go right now. I'll catch up with you on the next one. I got some ideas floating around. Be the survivor. Be the one in your space who gives more value more often. You create more useful content than anybody else, and you do it more often for longer than everybody else. You are the survivor, and eventually you will rise to the absolute top of your niche. No tricks, no hacks, just being helpful. It's in alignment with the laws of the universe. Zig Ziglar said it best, and we'll end on the quote one last time for you. You can have anything that you want in this world, as long as you help enough other people get what they want in this world. And all those people right now, they're searching Google, they're searching YouTube, they're scrolling around on socials, trying to find something that's going to improve their lives. And you could be the one to help them with that. Get to it. Have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one.